This new front door has been here for 19 years, watching tenants come and go. Some days, some weeks, new sofas, two sofas, no sofa at all. He has been here for 11 years. He stays, happy. The window wasn't always broken. The paint wasn't always the colour of his blood, red tulips that he liked to bring home. Under this archway, no light bulb could light the laughter, the noises, the words he wasn't meant to hear, the tapping of feet running, echoing through the swallow, the clanging and thudding, clang, thud, clang, thud of domino dustbins clumsily scraped back into his legs, sworn to secrecy. He only saw daylit kids, teenagers, hiding from the road on these steps, leading up to his front door. He would read their hatred and hear the flapping of the letterbox that swallows their lit cigarettes, then add his hatred next to theirs. Hello. Hi. Uh, this is a door. <laughs> And uh, this door has been blocked up, but um, but somebody didn't like that, so they they spray painted a door over the door that was blocked up. Would you like to come with me? Please, uh, keep walking a bit faster. Time. Hello. Matt. Come on. <laughs> I don't know how familiar any of you are with um, the term happy slapping, um, but this lamppost um, at about 12.30 at night, about a year ago, roughly about this time of year, the first happy slap ever took place, which ever took place, happened right here in Totnes. And uh, since then it's spread throughout uh, the UK and uh, also throughout Europe. Um, but I would like to tell you that this is where it started. Uh, the people who, who kind of uh, slapped the first person parked in that car park. Uh, <laughs> and uh, in the disabled bay. Because they were reckless. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up! 
that this is where the happy slappers wash the blood from their hands. <laughs> I'll tell you a lie about this spring. People with leprosy used to come and drink the water and wash themselves here. As I sat there in the corner of the boat, drinking a pint of flowers, watching the horse racing, a woman came and sat down next to me. She was around 45, average height, and slender. I also noticed that she had fashioned herself a pair of jean shorts. I, acknowledge, I acknowledged her by nodding and smiling. She returned the gesture. As I sat there watching the racing, I looked around and noticed that the bar had six people in it, including myself and her. There was plenty of seats around yet she had specifically chosen to come and sit right next to me. But I'd made no effort to make any sort of conversation. Chloe, the barmaid, came over and collected my glasses. I said thank you. As I said this, the woman next to me said, you're welcome. This confused me some bit. So I said, I'm sorry. To which she simply replied, oh, that's okay. <laughs> I was completely bemused by this. I was completely bemused. This one was nuts. I got quickly and walked over to the bar and ordered another pint. I made a sharp bolt to the furthest point away from the possible that I could see that, that I could still see her. She just sat there, watching the racing, not drinking, but from what I could see, motionless. As I sat there watching this one, she turned her head and looked straight at me. I looked away as fast as I could, but she caught me looking at her. What should I do? Do I do I look back? Or do I just sit here with this awful twist in my neck? <laughs> I looked back. She was still looking at me with this overemphasized smile on her face. She stood up. Oh, God, please do not come and sit next to me. The staring was bad enough from over there. She started walking, still looking at me. But she turned, walked towards the bar, and all her drink. Christ Almighty, that was close. As she received a drink, she turned sharply and looked at me once again. She walked towards me, placed a drink on the table and sat down. This was not my lucky day. She reached down and put her hand in one of the pockets of her jean shorts and pulled out this little folded piece of paper, placed it on the beer mat and slid it towards me. And without, and then without a word, stood up, walked up, stood up and walked out of the bar, leaving a drink on this piece of paper. I automatically I automatically thought there was going to be something utterly repulsive wrapped in the middle of it. Curiosity got the better of me and I opened it. The paper was all torn and battered. Inside, a folded piece of paper was a crumpled photograph of the outside of the book. 